Welcome to the Kindle Report, where I share my 44 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Remember to subscribe, like, and share these videos. Just a few days ago, I did a video on what my expectations are for the influence of AI on the economy. And many folks were pointing out that I didn't have full context there. And as I told you, there would be multiple videos around this subject. So let's get into a couple things, reviewing what I talked about just a couple days ago, and let's walk this process forward. Now, my hypothesis is that we're going to see massive productivity growth. I'll show you a chart that I put on the other night to just to illustrate exactly what those effects could be if we come close to some of these numbers. And I'll go through very specific numbers when I'm going through this next section. So let's talk just about the productivity gains that I'm talking about. So I believe in 2024 there will be gains, but we're not going to see the big gains until 2025 and beyond. And I also believe that the debt to GDP ratio will peak out in 2024. Now, the chart I'll show you shows that it's at the end of 2024. It could be any point in between. As everybody knows, this is an election year, and there's a lot that's likely to go on, especially as we come in to that November window and in this year. But from the standpoint of the GDP to debt ratio, I believe it will peak out in 2024. So let's talk about some of my assumptions that I'm making for 2025. My assumption is that we're going to see productivity move up toward around 8% gains, and that's going to affect the GDP numbers fairly substantially. I realize in most folks' minds that somehow AI is going to eliminate a lot of jobs. I am under the belief that we're going to see something way different than a loss of jobs, but actually an increase of new types of jobs that are going to come in. I mentioned this in the other night's video, is that what we're seeing here is there's still basically a man in the middle, meaning there's a person that's driving a lot of the process. It's enhancing initially a lot of jobs out there that can be automated but still need interaction with humans. Later in the cycle, we'll see more of the AI doing all of the tasks in certain places, and we'll start to see people migrate to a much different place in the workplace and how they're going to interact with their jobs and how productivity is going to be increased. So initially, it will be the AI that's going to drive this pattern forward. And what I mean by that is the initial move will be utilizing AI. Sometimes it may be chatbots, other types of things that will step in. But there's going to be a lot of interaction. Any of you that have used any AI, whether it's ChatGPT or other things that are out there, you know that they're fairly inefficient yet, and it takes a lot of interreaction. Now, we are actually getting ready to embrace putting a API in some of our software to start to crunch and do some analysis that I have already tested out that they're going to find to be very interesting because what we're seeing here is the ability to take a look at some of the numbers, recognize patterns, actually talk about suitability. Those of uh, folks that are my institutional clients, there's a lot of things I've already pre-tested that are absolutely amazing. But as we look at what's likely to happen, let's talk about a couple of things. Let's go into 2025 and take a potential glimpse of what it might look like there. As we start to see, there'll be another generation of chat GPT out. GPT-5 will be out, and it's going to have even more capabilities, obviously, than 4. It's going to automate a lot more efficiently, and that's where we'll start to see some of these gains happen. And I don't expect, like I said, that jobs are just going to be eliminated. Some jobs, yes, but people are going to have to update their strategies and 
they're going to have to update their education, their interaction with the technology, all of those things. So let's talk about a couple potential aspects of what the technology is going to do. And once I get done with this, I'm going to go into some long-term charts and show you some of the projections that are coming out of the WaveTech projection tools from a Fibonacci standpoint, also looking at the AR, the auto regression algorithms and how they're predicting things out. We'll go through some longer term charts. Now I discussed them in the beginning of the month on my Substack, but let's go and dig a little bit into what I believe is going to happen here. So a couple of things that uh, it's interesting that I think folks aren't going to realize uh, until we get into this next phase, We've already seen some of this, where we're actually going to see the high, higher productivity obviously means businesses and companies are going to be able to generate more capital, more income. And then it comes down to the expense side of controlling that on the employee. So with the uh, rising income and wages, the uh, increased productivity typically leads to higher wages because firms can now afford to pay more because they're getting more out per hour than what they were before. And so it's contrary, at least on wages, I believe in the beginning that a lot of folks that I've heard out there talking about it, how it's going to actually have the opposite effect where people are just going to be eliminated. I don't believe that's the case. Uh, there's going to be a lot of human interaction with the technology. As I said earlier, there's not a lot of total automated processes right now. There are some things that are getting there. The chat GPT-5 will actually tie together some of these advanced techniques that will actually automate and not only eliminate some jobs, I believe there's going to be a lot of job creation as we go forward here just due to this expansion of business and bodies are going to be needed to oversee this until all these processes get absolutely locked down and truly automated. Right now, there is plenty of stuff being automated, but there's a lot of dots to connect in between A and B. The other thing that's likely to come out of this technology is a more competitive ability for a lot of companies to compete with each other. Uh, from an investment standpoint, what we're going to see is a lot of these mid-cap companies are going to start to come into play. I think they're going to be the most likely to benefit the most. Not that Microsoft and Google and the big seven aren't going to do well from having the technology around, but it's going to be incremental compared to a lot of these smaller companies that are actually going to be able to double and quadruple some of their activities that's coming out of the use of this technology, therefore just expanding income and all aspects of the business to places where they never thought they would be able to get to. The other thing that's likely to come from this, and I'm trying to break this down in general terms, maybe there'll be individual videos on any of these points that I'm putting together, but for right now, let's just talk about the potential of the increased profits are also going to give companies the ability to reinvest back into this technology and to expand it even faster. So depending on how aggressive a company is in taking that new income, expanding the abilities within their company to really ramp things up, that will vary from company to company and how aggressive the CEO is and the managers of that business. I still think even on a smaller scale, if we go to non-public traded companies, even entities that have maybe five to 10 employees will also be able to expand their activities substantially as well. So here's the other thing that is likely to happen. The industries that are going to be mostly impacted are obviously medical diagnostics, those type of things. We're also going to see accounting, fintech, there's a lot of obvious players here. I also mentioned the other day that even the legal field is going to be affected substantially because some of these AI attorneys are going to be way better than any individual attorney is going to be able to do from a research standpoint, finding cases and other types of things that are going to help them. The legal process be cleaner, maybe 
there'll be a lot of efficiencies in that industry as well. But as we come in to this subject, which is the efficiencies that start to come in, now we're starting to get to the point where productivity can really start to scale. And I believe, like I said, that's going to happen probably in 2025 and 26 is going to be a huge year. And if I look at just projections, uh, which I'll do here in a minute with you, projections of what the markets are likely to do as we go out and look at like a quarterly S&P chart and look at the algorithms, Fibonacci targets that are out there, it gets pretty serious. And the GDP numbers that I, I will talk to you about as well are something that we need to pay attention to because they're going to expand substantially even if we come close to these numbers. I think you could um, not quite divide by two, but you could divide by two and really come up with some pretty good numbers. I didn't do those calculations, but I did change the some of the growth numbers on the debt side, considering that the governments aren't very good about curtailing their expenditures especially if they're seeing big income coming in and the GDP and therefore tax receipts and other opportunities that are going to be out there. I'm presenting a very bullish scenario because what I believe is about to happen is going to change the landscape completely. So we start to look at potential long-term health of industries and sectors that are likely to grow. Now, there's going to be winners and losers when we first start this process. And make no mistake that some of the ones I mentioned are definitely going to be the players. As always, in some of these sectors, there's going to be unexpected growth as well. So maybe a sector that didn't seem very likely to benefit from this will also be in play. We're looking at engineering, manufacturing, all types of stuff, folks. This is going to flow across everything. I really want to dispel, I'm not that afraid of the technology. The fear has been put into a lot of people, especially people that think their jobs might be affected by this. So there's a tendency for some folks to be apprehensive about some of the things I'm talking about. So let's just discuss a couple things here from the standpoint of the GDP ratio. I want to go there first. We're going to some long-term market analysis. I'll come back with a conclusion of this video. The chart that I will show you in a minute is actually going to show you exactly what type of growth patterns I'm expecting. And it also assumes that the government is going to keep somewhat of a slower growth than the GDP can go. And that's a key number. As I mentioned the other day, Jay Powell mentioned that the debt is growing faster than the GDP, and that's that's a problem, and he's absolutely right. And the, like I said in the previous video, the only way we're going to solve this is to get into some kind of, don't have to call it hyper growth, but it really will be hyper growth if we can get GDP to expand at levels I'm talking about, but more importantly, that we're going, we see productivity hit 8%, I'm talking about 12% plus numbers as we get into 26 and 27. So many industries, education, everybody's going to be affected by this. And it's not going to be a bad thing. It's going to be a good thing. It's going to give us all a lot of capabilities that we didn't have before. But more importantly, it's going to give the ability for us to expand economies. And this debt ratio, I believe, will come under control probably within a decade. So all of the scenarios that I talked to you about the other day, sooner or later, some fiscal discipline will come into play. It will have to. If we get some good custodians and managers to, into the governments across the world to be able to get these things under control, it won't take much of a tweak just to make this thing expand substantially. And this is my point. I think folks have built such a catastrophic view of what's happening that they don't see any way out and they've been told this for years and years and years yet as i mentioned the other day uh, we had a treasury auction today it was about 2.4 to 1 but it was a 30-year auction but most of the treasury auctions are running at so we're getting 290 percent bids over what is being offered 
And this has been the case. There was a whole story coming out in 2023 how the government was going to be competing for capital and there wasn't going to be enough to go around and it was going to come up short. Well, we know none of that happened. Of course, that was after the shutdown and they had to replenish the Treasury, all of these different details. The reality is, is that the world has a tremendous amount of cash flow. You're looking at, you know, a... $23 trillion plus economy. I've got it growing to $26, $28 trillion in just in the next three to five years. So this is a really big deal. Let's just get into some of the long-term aspects. Let's look at some charts and start to talk about some of the possibilities here. So the chart that I have on the screen right now is the quarterly chart, S&P long-term chart. And What's happening with the, we'll start with the algorithm. So we're looking at the PPMs, which are the indicators down below. All of them are showing really a stable flat pattern. And uh, it's been a while since I talked about this, but typically what happens is we get this big ramp up in momentum where, where my cursor is right now. And then we get into this flat period, which I call the trend maintenance mode. And that trend maintenance mode is is showing that it is drifting slightly lower, but all of these are very big positive integers of one to two full numbers. Anybody that's been around this channel knows anything over 0.25 is a trend. And right now we're looking at 1.62 on PPM1. And even at its worst projected level, if it gets there, it's still positive by 0.12. So what we're likely to see is these stability of this trend. You can see even in the AR, the projected moving averages going forward, they have a nice slope. It's nothing, it's not a parabolic slope at all. But the other thing that I want to point out is that the there's some Fibonacci targets here. And the Fibonacci targets are substantial and they are for the market to move to 61.18, 71.21, and 7741. Now these are numbers that are, it's going to take multiple years. So if we go out into a uh, moving my cursor over, we're looking at 26. This trend is going to be moving up toward these levels. So we're talking about a huge move in value of the S&P. And that is likely is telling us that exact story that I'm telling. Those of you that have been around me for a while, you know that one of the things that I, I talk about all the time is this reverse fundamental. So I, if AI is going to have the effects that I'm talking about, this is how I came up with it. I looked at the charts on the quarterly and said, how are we going to get to this 61 handle? If we're going there, something big has to happen to generate those type of returns in the markets to get them to that level. So the re reality is, is that to get to 6,000 or even 7,000 numbers I just talked about, you're going to have to have huge growth in the economy. And so I asked that question. As you obviously know from this video, I'm a big advocate, or I believe that the effects of AI is going to be substantial. I've mentioned this before. If you haven't got my annual report, it was you can go sign up to my Substack. That's kendallreport.substack.com, and go there. It's free. You can pull down that annual report there. It was uh, you'll have to go in the previous reports that were delivered. I do reports every day, so you'll have to go down into that and look down. I believe it was December 29th that was released. But the point of mentioning that over and over again is this is the hypothesis and how I came up with it. This is really a video review of a lot of things that I talked about in that at that time. So let's talk about something that I, is important. I mentioned it the other night. If we get these kind of productivity, when you start to get that type of efficiencies, then you can get into a major deflationary type scenario where prices do ultimately start to go down. And with this, the debt that we have on, there's a number of issues that can come up with that as well. And so let's just talk about a couple other things that are likely to come into play here with the 
lower cost of production through the efficiencies, what you're likely to see is the potential for prices starting to drop and get into a bit of a deflationary scenario. Now, there's consumer effects when you get into deflation. It's the opposite of what we're seeing here in 2024 right now, where people want to go out and buy something before the price goes up because of inflation. In that scenario, what we're looking at is the opposite. You may want to wait a little bit to buy because things are getting cheaper. So it does have an effect on the economy and maybe slowing things down from that standpoint. The key is there's always a new shiny object in the economy that people want. And what we're going to see is a completely different view of the world. When we get into 20, 26, 27 and beyond, things are going to look a lot different. And this is going to be the key element. I just want to digress for a minute because I talk all the time is if you're always investing, looking in the rear view mirror, I saw something on Twitter the other day and they're making all these comparisons. The last time that the markets have been like they are right now is 1929 and all these frothy numbers and they go back and you're investing while looking in the rear view mirror. And that's never been a good thing to do. It's always, maybe it'll happen again, but so many people have been waiting for the crash of 87 and 29 and an, another 2008 and the more recent type situation. That's when you get banking crisis, you get a bank that, that maybe goes upside down, all of a sudden all the banks, it's very catastrophic thinking. So that type of psychology always comes into play. And that's why I've always told you folks on this channel is you want to try to look forward the best you can. You always want to find these elements that I'm talking about right now to look forward in the expectations of what the economy is likely to do. And that's easier said than done. It's really difficult, but sometimes, like where we sit right now, and in that annual report, I referenced the first industrial revolution, the second, the third, and I'm calling this the fourth, and I believe this is going to be the biggest one of all of them. In the previous, I believe the third was when in 1966 and coming into 1980, where we saw computers starting to come into play, and then that, that whole scenario has played out until today, and now we're seeing the emergence of AI and other types of technologies come out. And with this newest technology, this is going to expand things substantially. We've got supercomputers out there that can have capabilities that no one even dreamed of that we would have at our fingertips. And that's just going to get bigger and bigger as we go forward. So I would say this is how I came up with the scenario and why I believe this is going to be a substantial situation going forward. All right, so this is going to be the end of part two. There's much more I want to talk about. I'll go into more details. We'll probably start to break down in industry groups. And ultimately, this will lead to some ETF hacks and showing you how to use our technology for portfolio management, along with the WaveTech indicators and other tools that I have built over the last 40 years to help you manage those portfolios and move money forward in an efficient way. It's going to be a lot different, folks, as we go forward. Thanks for watching and spending your time. We'll see you on the next video. If you enjoyed this information, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and also hit that notification bell so you'll know when the next video comes up. If you want to review any of our products, you can go to kindlereport.com slash wavetech for our portfolio management tools. You can also go slash indicators and slash newsletter if you want to get my daily research. Thank you again for watching. We'll talk to you all very soon.